Hello dear audience, my name is Andreas Buda and I am not a YouTuber, so bear with me in this demo. This will be a live demo, so I will only edit one take and whatever happens will happen. I am a hobby photographer who sometimes shoots events or weddings mainly for friends. And I love to play around with electronic devices and look for neat solutions. I recently bought the Toshiba Flash Air W04 Wi-Fi SD card to enable real-time backup of my Ricoh GR3. Since I'm considering the ESR, I realized it works for this camera too, or every camera with only one SD slot. In combination with the iOS app Shutter Snitch, this backup solution can be, can be quite powerful and productive. There is no equivalent backup solution for Android users, I only found a slower and fiddlier alternative. So why should you even consider this solution? There are three reasons. It is fast, reliable and works wirelessly on the fly while you shoot. It even reconnects its Wi-Fi network after you turn your camera off and on. And what do you need to make this work? You need a camera, you need the Toshiba Flash Air W04 SD card, you need the iPad or iPhone, the app Shutter Snitch, the Flash Air app, and you may want to consider the WD My Wireless Passport SSD drive. Currently it is charging, so hopefully it won't die on me during this test. Short specs of the Flash Air. It costs about 50 US dollars or 50 euros, has 64 gigabyte of storage and can consistently read at 90 megabytes per second and write with 60 to 70 megabytes per second in camera. Its Wi-Fi signal transmits 32 Mbits per second or 4 megabytes per second of data. It is decent, but not sufficient for long shooting bursts. Short specs of Shutter Snitch, it is an iOS only app, which is subscription based for $299 or €299 Euros per month. Now to the demonstration. First, I will demonstrate the performance speed of the core backup solution with a stopwatch, including the time of reconnecting to the Wi-Fi. Second, I will dive in deeper what you can do with the setup. Third, I will show you a wireless 321 backup on the fly with the WD My Passport wireless SSD. Fourth, I will briefly talk about the alternative for Android users, which is slower and involves coding. So now I show you the performance speed in four tests. I stop the time how long it takes for my iPad to reconnect to the Wi-Fi signal of the Flash Air SD card. Therefore, I use my iPhone as a timer and once I turn my camera on, I will also turn the timer on. But first, of course, I unlock my iPad. This is the app Shutter Snitch. So we'll turn on the camera and we will see how long it takes in this live test. Usually it takes about 15 to 30 seconds to reconnect. So let's see how it goes. Usually there should pop up a notification over there once it's reconnected. So now it's reconnected, it took about 21 seconds and usually it's about as fast. In the second test I will uh, stop the time of taking a picture in JPEG with a 13 megabyte file transferring to my iPad. It works with RAW 2 but I prefer speed over big RAW files. Actually my camera records RAW plus JPEG but there is a setting in Shutter Snitch that it only imports JPEG but you also can turn that off so that it also imports the raw file too. So I will reset the timer and take a picture. And we will see how long this takes. And now it got imported. It took about five seconds in repeated tests also. It took about four to eight seconds, but usually it stayed within four to six seconds. The third test, I stopped the time of taking five pictures in JPEG and let them transfer to my iPad. That is about 65 megabytes of data. So
so I will also reset the timer and start with the first picture and take five pictures. One, two, three, four, five. You can see over there the progression circle, I may call it. Third picture, the third, the fourth picture get imported, and the fifth picture. I took about 23 seconds in repeated tests. It always was between 20 and 25 seconds. In the fourth test, I will do exactly the same, but first I will power down my camera and we will see if it gets uh, imported. Uh, what I mean with this is I turn on the camera, the connection takes about 20 seconds to reconnect and during these 20 seconds I will take five pictures. Then you can see if these pictures get imported course also with the timer. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see how long it takes to reconnect. So I got reconnected. It starts transferring the pictures. Second picture, the fourth picture, and the fifth picture. And it took about 36 seconds. In repeated tests, it took about 35 to 45 seconds, but usually it stayed between 35 and 40 seconds. So now that we have done this uh, demonstration with the core backup solution, I will dive in deeper within the apps and first I'll show you three important things within the Flash Air app. Over here it's all in German. Uh, sorry the camera powered down the display but it's still running. Uh, within the Flash Air app um, you have the app settings and the Flash Air settings. I will talk about the Flash Air settings. Everything is in German but I will explain everything. There we have the internet pass-through mode. This is pretty important because um, usually it means when your wife, uh, when your iPad is connected to your camera or to your SD card, there is no internet connection anymore. But since this SD card can act as a bridge to the vendor's Wi-Fi or to your home Wi-Fi, um, the iPad can still uh, access the internet. That is important for cloud-based backups. This internet pass-through mode is also important for the three-to-one backup via the wireless SSD drive. Second setting I want to talk about is the iFi connected. Some, uh, most cameras are iFi compatible. That means if the camera is transferring pictures or if the SD card is transferring pictures to your iPad, it won't shut down even if you push the, the power button. Once it is finished, then it will shut down. There's a pretty uh, cool feature because it prevents data loss. But you also have to turn this setting on within your camera, not only in your Flash Air app. You might remember that, please. The, fourth, uh, the third setting I want to talk about is cellular data and Wi-Fi mode. It's pretty similar to the internet pass-through mode because it means that when your iPad is connected to your SD card, it is simultaneously connected to your LTE carrier so you still have internet connection. That's pretty handy if you're on an outdoor location where there is no Wi-Fi, uh, but you still have cellular connection. So let's switch to Shutter Snitch. This app can be pretty powerful and I will show you some of its features. First of all, all of your, EXIF, all of your important EXIF data is displayed, ISO 100, 2.8 aperture, one tenth of a second shutter speed, the file name you can print within the app if a printer is connected. You can edit the metadata. That is pretty cool because it's, uh, it follows the IPTC standard, but it has many more categories. You can literally edit anything within the metadata. That's quite powerful. 
you can comment on your picture you can edit your picture with some uh, standard things like temperature hue saturation shadows highlights stuff like that you can share your pictures of course select the pictures then choose the share sheet but you can also save them in your camera roll or you can archive them in a zip file which is pretty cool but you also can do cloud backup and it pretty much has everything you can imagine from Zenfolio, WebDuff, SmartMark, Google Drive, FTP, Flickr, FeedShops, Dropbox, everything there. You can watch the histogram with RGB channels. Of course, you can delete the file. And this thing, um, there's a special feature I like to recommend because since the app always has to be in the foreground and still uh, and to be active to receive the pictures from this camera, um, we have uh, a protection mode. You turn this on and your display gets dimmed and you cannot change accidentally any settings. So that's uh, quite handy because um, as soon as your app is in the background, iOS only permits 10 minutes of background um, activity and after 10 minutes everything gets shut down. So this has to be always in the foreground and never lock the screen. And you can also rate the pictures with color tags or with um, stars. But most, important, uh, most importantly you can fully automate everything with event triggered actions. I'll show you one example over here. I already created some uh, automated uh, actions, but we will create a new one. I want to create an action for Facebook. Sorry. Now we can choose what you want, what we want to do. I want to change the metadata and add my copyright. Yep, that's my actual name. Then I want to um, change the file name to customized. I will call it wedding. And you will also apply a specific number. So it uh, gets an individual number. So, and then I will change the file size to 2048 pixels for Facebook and I want to watermark my image, uh, images. And lastly, I want to export it to um, my Dropbox. I don't have any Facebook account, so my Dropbox account has to be enough. And now we have finished this new action. I get down here. And so as soon as I import the next picture, it will get transferred to my iPad, edited and uploaded to my Dropbox. And I will also trigger the timer. So the picture gets imported, now it gets changed, now it gets uploaded, and boom, done. Took nine seconds to import the picture, edit the picture, and upload it to my Dropbox. And as proof, we of course will go into my Dropbox. And there we have this picture. And it's called Wedding 0001, just as we wanted to do. My copyright, Andreas Buda, down here. And it got edited to 2048 pixels, so everything worked just fine. That is a pretty powerful feature. 
and this uh, action feature brings us to the 3 to 1 backup strategy I previously talked about. I have here, I already told you, the my passport wireless SSD drive. It's already powered on. It is basically a photo tank for photo backup. On the go it has an SD slot and wireless functionality. But I will uh, use one special feature, the FTP server function. I set up my flash air to a uh, car to connect to the Wi-Fi signal of this SSD. Then I switch to shell snitch, where I already am, that can upload all, incom on all incoming photos to a FTP server. So, but we have to set this up. But as you can see, I already have created uh, a certain action. I can show you. It changes the picture. Uh, it basically reduces the file size to about one third. And then it exports it to the FTP server that is created on my wireless SSD drive. The backup connection to the wireless SSD drive is not the fastest. It is only one megabyte per second. So it is pretty important to reduce the file size before uploading it. So I have chosen the passport action. And now I will take a picture and show you how this works. I will do one picture. gets imported, this, it gets changed and it gets exported to FTP and now it's done. It took about 13 seconds to import the picture, change the file size, not the resolution, but only the file size and uploading to my wireless SSD drive. I will repeat this test with five pictures, just as before. Two, three, four, five, and now we will see how fast this works. Why do I call it the three to one backup strategy? Because I will have three copies of my file. One is on the SD card, including the raw file. The second is on my iPad. It has a full, it's a full size JPEG. And the third file is my wireless SSD drive with reduced file size. So I believe this is a moment where something goes wrong. Oh no, it works. But one action failed. We have to look into that. So now it stopped. Remember, um, this time is a little bit longer as usual because something went wrong. Okay, we have uh, a timeout from the connection. So basically this means uh, I have to uh, max out the timeout uh, on my FTP server because obviously it's not uh, long enough. So we will repeat this test. So I don't want this thing here. So two, three, four, five. Now let's see what happens. So the cool thing is, before it gets exported, you can literally edit anything before it's uh, before it goes into your Wi-Fi. 
SSD, so that is pretty powerful. And when you have three copies, you have uh, one of them, one of the copies is on a pretty handy SSD drive, which you can plug in into your computer via USB. So it took about 47 seconds uh, to transmit these files, five files. So, but as you have seen, um, you have to set up the FTP server correctly. So I will increase the timeout time. Now I have shown you the three to one backup strategy. Um, but I only, uh, also want to talk about uh, for uh, the solution for Android users because there the situation is not as rosy. Um, for example, um, you can, you would be able to use the Flash Air app. You can see my files. What this Flash Air app does, it also auto downloads um, the files onto the iPad and saves them in the camera roll. Um, so everything seems to be fine, but unfortunately this app is quite slow. So the transfer times are slower and it also has really long lags before it starts uploading the pictures to the iPad. So therefore I was looking for an alternative and I found it in Shuttersnitch. But in Android there is no such app and I really looked for it, but I couldn't find anything. The second solution that might work um, is that you can actually program the SD card to upload to an FTP server directly without the need to go to, to a smartphone app. So you have to, you, know, you can see that it starts to download, but you have also seen how long it took that it started that action. But maybe this is a way for Android users um, you have to decide this for yourself. So back to the SD card, you can program with Lua scripts, L-U-A scripts. Um, you can program the SD card to upload directly to a FTP server. And since the Wi-Fi SSD drive, the My Passport Wireless SSD, is, uh, an FT is a FTP server, all just works fine. But also the speed of uploading the pictures is quite slow. It is also the one megabyte per second. And since that, uh, since uh, you cannot decide which files get uploaded, because every file gets uploaded, um, it would take really long with raw plus JPEG. In my case, it's 42 megabytes per second. Um, so it takes 42 seconds for basically one picture. And since I assume that you want, still want to shoot raw files, it would take really long. In my setup, um, I chose only to import the JPEG files and upload reduced file size JPEGs to my SSD drive. So um, I have shown the Flash Air app. That might be the best shot for Android users, but um, maybe you find something else. Um, I would like to know. Please write down that. Uh, write that down in your comments. Um, from my side, from my side, that's it right now. And I hope you enjoyed this video, found it helpful. And uh, we will see you. We will see us maybe in the next one. I will decide that later because I'm really no YouTuber. Um, but we will see. So, have a nice day.